Okay, I'm looking at, um, it's the E-Power Reverser, John Deere 4310, and what's happening is the machine will, um, will be moving, and let's say you're in a higher gear, like third or fourth gear, and what's happening is uh, it loses the hydraulic pressure in the transmission, and then the machine will kind of come to a, a coast, and then it'll re-engage itself, and then continue to move uh, from there. So... So what's happening inside the transmission is there's a pressure, a hydraulic uh, fluid pressure regulator valve that's supposed to regulate the pressure in the transmission. I think it's around 150 PSI or so, right? So there's, there's a regulator in there and really what it's supposed to do is just regulate the flow of hydraulic fluid into the transmission. And that way, a um, couple of things, right? There's a bypass valve in there. So if, if pressure gets too high, there's a bypass valve and it'll actually do kind of what it's doing now. It'll, it'll go into like a neutral, even though you're in gear and the clutch is out and you've been driving it and you're going along and it goes into like a neutral mode. And then eventually once you stop, it goes back into drive mode and it starts driving again. So that, that is a loss of pressure, uh, most likely because the bypass valve has been opened and it's letting the fluid uh, bypass the transmission, right? So, so all that said, um, this is really common, believe it or not, on the, the e-power reversers because even though it's a clutch and you have um, you know a clutch pedal and there's there's some mechanical parts to it the the hydraulic fluid is still really doing the um, the clutch operation if you will or the forward movement of the machine and the backwards movement of the machine so the fluid is important to be at the right pr pressure in the transmission because that's really still what's going to be driving uh, the transmission right so if you if you look at the valve on these, this is what it this is what it looks like, and it's just a pressure valve, it's just a, a regulator uh, pressure valve, right, with a spring inside of it, and then there's a couple O-rings around either side of the, the pressure area, and the fluid goes in and out the center, uh, and the valve will be relieved if it's too high, and it'll be um, it'll be closed if it's too low, and it runs at about 150. PSI, so that's kind of where it's supposed to be. So when you, when the O-rings on this start to go, obviously fluid's going around it, right? And now it can't regulate, maybe it's going to 250 or 300 PSI, which is too high, that's just too high. And then once you hit the, hit the, uh, the RPMs up on the motor, it's obviously gonna be way too high. So th this thing here is kind of sensitive to, to being faulty, and, and when this goes, that's kind of what you'll, what you'll experience, the machine, is moving along just fine and all of a sudden it's like you pushed the clutch in but you didn't and then once the machine comes to a stop it'll it'll re-engage itself because pressure has now stabilized and the bypass valve in there is closed and now fluids trying to go through the through the regulator again and it, and it does right but if you if you go at a high rpm that's where it gets it gets kind of out of whack and then the bypass valve opens and the transmission stops moving so <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to change the o-rings first thing you want to do is pull this out now to get to this or to find this it's really not that obvious because um it's it's kind of on the left side of the machine and it's kind of buried uh underneath the transmission pan so what you what you want to do first is pull you want to pull the transmission pan out right so that's on the ground there that's underneath the machine just behind the engine you pull that out and then you're going to use it's a one inch wrench and you're going to put the one inch wrench on the on the actual um, regulator from underneath right it's on the side so it's facing me if you were to look at it on the transmission and then there's a bracket there's a bracket on the side that you want to take off that holds the main hydraulic line in place on the machine it's this guy here take that off and there's actually um, an intentional opening that you'll see in here and you can see where this thing goes from so from underneath you're gonna you're gonna break it free with the wrench and then you're gonna spin it out from underneath. And then when you go to take it off the machine, you pull it out through this hole. And that way uh, it actually comes out with, uh, without falling inside um, the frame area and whatnot. So you're gonna, you're gonna take it out, it's right there. That's the hole where it goes. And once you get it out, um, it looks, this is it here, so it looks like this. And you, you, can order, you can order the seals for this regulator, but you can't get the regulator. I'm sure you could if you tried hard enough, but technically this is such a simple thing that it doesn't really fail unless it becomes dirty, you can clean it, but this one's pretty clean. So the way, the way you want to do this, the first pass you want to do with this 
is you want to change the O-rings on the regulator and you can get those through John Deere. So there's three, there's three O-rings. These have been changed. I just changed them. You know, get yourself some, some hydraulic uh, picks. These are hydraulic seal picks. And these, these are what you want to do when you change um, O-rings on hydraulics. Use these kinds of things, right? Because you can easily pull uh, O-rings out and you can put them on with the right tools. You're going to change out those three O-rings. There's three. There's one here in the end. Yeah, that one, one in the middle, and one on the very end for the seal for the actual regulator itself. So change the O-rings on that, and then you're going to get yourself a new filter. Uh, this also can contribute to the pressure issue in the in the machine, so that's the filter part number. Grab a new filter from John Deere, uh, put some new O-rings on the regulator, and then put it all back together again and, and give it a shot, right? That's really what you want to do. Um, that, nine times out of ten, that will fix it, and the machine will be will be fine. If you still have issues with the with the machine doing that, uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a faulty regulator most likely, and the spring is probably too weak in there, and it's not enough pressure, or the spring is too is too um, it's probably too weak the to spring in there, and it needs to be replaced. So you're gonna have to get the regulator through John Deere. You can get that, I believe. It's just not readily available. You have to order it special order most likely, but that's really what you want to do. So that that will help fix the issue with. Um, what I explained earlier, you know, the machine is moving. It feels like somebody pushed the clutch in. However, you haven't, and the machine just comes to a, a, a rolling stop. And eventually, without touching anything, it re-engages. The clutch will re-engage, um, it feels like, and it feels like the, you're, you're actually taking off again, but you're not doing anything. You're just sitting there the whole time. And that's, that symptom is pretty common on these, um, and that is really what I recommend you trying first. To try the new seals on the regulator and then try a new transmission filter, and I bet you that'll probably fix it, okay?